Germany went into history as the country that attacked the whole of Europe in two world wars that attacked France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, England, and the rest, which is in fact not true. And I will explain and prove that to you in this video. First of all, in the two world wars, there were three parties, and one, you can see them here, the people and dumb European slaves, like Germans, French, English, Belgians, Dutch, Danes, Norwegians, and here to the left, Americans and Eastern Europeans who just follow the orders of Pharaoh's nobility, who believe in Pharaoh's various propagandas and don't have a clue what the war is actually going on about. And all wars are about the internal fight within Pharaoh's nobility between the vertical rule royalists and the horizontal rule republicans. Actually, it says it all in this picture here with below the Statue of Liberty given by the French revolutionaries of the republican horizontal rule being attacked by Pharaoh's German nobility of the feudal vertical rule. So here, this is the American symbol, actually a French symbol, of liberté, fraternité, égalité. You know, that's where it comes from, liberty, fraternity, and equality, or liberty, freedom which is the symbol of the horizontal rule republic. This is the republic. And here in blue, and here in red, you know, red is the old world order, is the, um, the, 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 the symbol of the vertical rule of the, um, of the old world order. It says it all in the picture, you know, in all symbolism, numbers, they show it everywhere. You know, this is actually basically what the war was about. And actually, these ones started it, which I will prove to you. And these ones here was a, um, was a result of these aggressors here. Remember how I showed you. 11 years ago, that the swastika derives out of a pyramid. And I show that in this video here on my channel, Gatsefrats. Right, it was a bit less, it was like 2016, that's eight years ago. But I already showed it to 11 years ago. So here is the channel and here is the title. Go and have a look at it. And this swastika was on the boot in the picture I just showed you before. It's a reference to Pharaoh. I've explained the nobility's internal war in many of my videos like this one here on the same channel Gure from six or seven years ago. So here's the title and for the ones who haven't seen it yet, 
Just watch the whole series. This is part one. It goes to part 14. Or this video here on the same channel. And here's the title. Therefore, next to the dumb European slaves, the other two parties of World War II were the Republicans and the Royalists, both of pure pharaonic aristocratic blood, who apparently have now decided that is, the victorious Republicans and the horizontal rule Statue of Liberty, that the various dumb European slaves are going to be mixed up and eventually replaced with Muslim slaves from Africa and the Middle East who, due to religion, are far better to be manipulated. So the two world wars are basically the direct consequences of the French Revolution of 1789, when the Freemason Knights Templars horizontal rule Republicans terminated and literally murdered out the king's vertical rule royalists. Why else do you think Adolf here on June 28th, 1940, is posing in front of the Eiffel Tower? where it all began. Didn't he have more important things to do? The reason is this, as it says here to the left, the origin and its direct consequence on the right side. The new horizontal Republican rule revolution to the left versus the response of the old vertical feudal rule of the empire on the right. So you see the French Revolution, the French flag, and it says the origin and its direct consequence with Adolf here in front of the Eiffel Tower. You know, symbology is very important. You know. It's not a coincidence he was here, you see. And again, both Republicans and Royalists were of pure aristocratic descent in an internal war within Pharaoh's worldwide nobility about how to rule over the dumb European slaves, including the whole of humanity on this prison planet. So here in the picture, it says the origin and its direct consequence. To the left, you can see the old world order, nobility eradicated and butchered. With to the right, the response of the old world order, nobility to that bloody event. So these here, the head here, and even these here, I mean, this is a Republican aristocrat, and this is a feudal aristocrat. And they are cousins, although these are French, they are cousins, it's the same pharaonic family with this German ones, or pharaoh's nobility who came, well, a little bit late, who came and help. You know, they couldn't do it before. Well, they, they did, they tried, but they lost the war, you know. So again, this is the origin of it all. And this is the direct consequence. This is why 
World War I happened. And this here again to the left is also why World War II happened. And I fear it's not finished yet. So the man in the picture here was of course the German Emperor William II. And it's one large family. This is he is family with these ones. He's a cousin of the English king, was a King George, a cousin of the Tsar of Russia, the Tsar Nicholas, and all of these officers, they're all of pharaonic aristocratic descent, except maybe this one. He looks a bit dumb. It's probably the aide de camp. Aide de camp. You know. So all these wars are by the nobility and their internal strife between this here, the horizontal rule, and this here, the vertical rule. This is feudal, the old world order. And here they made the Republican New World Order, which is now all over the world. Then, 14 years later, the French, after the French Revolution of 1789 and its shift from the vertical king's rule to the horizontal, Republicans rule. Napoleon attacked Germany on May 18th, 1803, trying to export the horizontal Republican rule all over the world. Thus, Napoleon attacking the royalist vertical rule of the German Empire, the Austrian Empire, the Kingdom of Italy, the Russian Empire, and the rest, who were far from pleased by these existential attacks on their royal sovereignties. So it says, May 18th, and remember this date very well, because this is again numerology and symbology. You probably heard me tell this, say this date many times in my previous videos. Maybe some of you might remember. So it says here, May 18th, 1803, the French aggressor attacks Germany. So here you see the French flag. Here's Napoleon. You see here he's got his hand, the hidden hand of Freemasonry. Because, well, Freemasonry comes out of the Knights Templars. And it's the biggest tool nowadays of the horizontal Republican rule. Freemasonry is Republican. And these Masons out of the Knights Templars, you know, the new world order, out of the nobility, it's all Pharaoh's nobility, they attack the king, the, the empire of Germany, which was at that time um, a vertical rule, you know, feudal almost, and royal, a monarchy. See, and with this event here on May 18th, 1803, the destiny and the two world wars were set in place. It is far from being a coincidence that the date of Napoleon's attack on Europe's vertical rule monarchies of 1803 was on May 18th, because May 18th, 1291, was the official end of the Crusades, coinciding with the fall of Acres, 
and last Templars stronghold in the Middle East, who two and a half months later, after May 18, 1291, founded Switzerland on August 1, 1291. To them, this symbolizes, look, we lost and disappeared on May 18, 1291. <laughs> but now we're back on that very same date of May 18, only 512 years later in the year 1803. Like nothing happened, just picking it up on that very same magical date of May 18th. You remember how powerful we are. The 512 years in between represent the octagon of 5 plus 1 plus 2 is 8. So here on the left side it says acres 1291. May 18th. And um, okay, well, th so this um, picture shows the um, the Battle of Acres and the Fall of Acres. The ruins are now in the in the north of the JJ base. Well, it should be actually this is here's the Swiss cross, you know, or the Hospitallers. It should be a red cross, but never mind. Maybe they ran out of clothes, eh? And here on the other side, it says the aggressor Napoleon, 1803. Also, May 18th, when he started the war against Germany. So here, it says here, disappeared. So here, they disappeared. And here on this side, they reappeared on the very same date of May 18th. And in the meantime, you know, 512 is 8. Years they were hiding in Switzerland, you know, from 1291 until 1803, just building up their power, their armaments, training, uh, everything. You know, it's the same as you know, finding Mr. Hitler, finding him back in Paris, you know, at the tomb of Napoleon. These guys never forget anything, and it just goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Now we've got the Third World War, you know, waiting for us, you know, but because this will never end. And, uh, well, the only way I see to end it is to, uh, to reveal everything. So here you can read it, the Siege of Acres, which the Knights Templars actually called Saint-Jean-d'Acre, as they spoke French. And here it says, the siege, it ended on May 18th, 1291. Like a magical date, sort of, eh? And, um, you know, you can read it all yourself. Yeah, Acre, Acres Falls. By the night of May 18th, Acre was in Mamluk hands, except for the Seaside Templar Fortress at the western tip of the city. So, May 18th, you know, disappeared, appeared. Now, here, the Napoleonic Wars, again, yeah, Wikipedia, you see, from 1803 to 1815. There was the Battle of Waterloo, 1815. And also, when the Swissies, they um, enacted a uh, a big a huge part of of the French part in Switzerland called the Jura. So here it says May eighteenth, you know, when the Napoleonic War started, May eighteenth, eighteen hundred and three. It's like a magic date for them, May eighteenth. Now of course eighteen is also like six six six, you know, six plus six plus six. You know. 
and the Knights Templars, they are the second, third, fourth sons, you know, of the ruler, of the king or the duke. So they are the princes, you know, like the prince of darkness, you know. And if you want to put it in a religious aspect, in a religious context, like um, Christ, he is like from the house of David, you know, the king of the, of the jaywalkers, which is the vertical rule. You know, and it, the Bible is a historical book, you know. It says, Napoleon seized power in 1799, 10 years after the revolution, establishing a military dictatorship. There are numerous opinions on the date to use as the formal beginning of the Napoleonic Wars. May 18th, 1803 is often used when Britain and France ended the only short period of peace between 1792 and 1814. It says everywhere, May 18th. Then two years after Napoleon's attack on the German Empire of May 18th, 1803, Germany surrenders on October 17th, 1805, and the Russian and Austrian empires defeated at the Battle of Austerlitz on December 2nd, 1805. And here lies the true reason of two world wars, with not Germany attacking France, but France attacking Germany, with France in fact being the aggressor leading to two world wars. So here you can see, you know, the emperor of uh, Germany, and this is probably the Tsar, this is the old world order. Here it says the vertical rule of the monarchies. And here comes Napoleon with his new world order after the French Revolution, which is the Republican horizontal rule, which depicts us very well in this image here. And it happened here at the Battle of Austerlitz. 1805. And as I told you, all wars and all world wars are about the internal strife between Pharaoh's nobility of the old world order here with the crown and the new world order here, the French uh, Napoleon. You know, this is what it's all about. Old world order versus new world order. So it is in fact France being the aggressor leading up to two world wars. And in fact, not Germany the aggressor. Here in this video on my old channel, Gure, the first Gure, that had disappeared for seven years and came back to life when suddenly my channel got reinserted after seven years of complete censorship. You can see my footage from 12 years ago of the pyramid of Austerlitz built by French aristocratic general Auguste de Marmont, referring to the Battle of Austerlitz, defeating Germany, crushing Germany's old world order, vertical rule, and pushing Germany by force to adopt the new revolutionary, new world order, horizontal rule. Well, why a pyramid, you might think? <laughs> well, because our masters are all of Pharaoh's nobility. 
and the demotic mer, as in the name de Marmont, means a pyramid, where de Marmont means a pyramid on a hill, for which they chose the Utrecht Hill Ridge to build it upon, as you can read in the next image as indicating the name <laughs> de Marmont. So you are lucky to see this again because this video had disappeared for seven years. And it's quite a miracle. All of a sudden, without any message, it came back. So go and have a look at it. You know? So this is the highest pyramid in Europe, I think, if I recall it. Oh, here it says 36 meters. I wanted to say 37. So here it says, here's the title, title The Pyramid of Austerlitz, made by Pharaoh Napoleon near the Bilderbergs in the Netherlands. And this is my old channel, Gure. And this is the, uh, the, the, the image. And um, it says I made it in 2013. That's 12 years ago, almost. And um, it only had 4,000 views, you know, and it's so important to know this. So go and have a look at it, you know, just punch in the title and uh, or scroll down because I hide my videos, I'm shadow banned. So the best is to, you know, go in this channel here. So that's Gure with small letters. And um, then to scroll down until you find the video. And um, so, and here, I can show you this here. There were some, you know, some uh, some indications here, and it it says I think I can't understand. Here it says de Marmont. This is um, the general. Here it says the T is missing here. Uh, Auguste de Marmont. De, it means he's of the nobility. M mer, me, ou meru. In the Demotic Pharaonic language, it means the pyramid. And Mont, like the Mont Blanc, you know, the biggest mountain in Europe, in France, it means uh, a mountain. So here it says a pyramid on a mountain, or the, a pyramid is a mountain. You know? So there's some more for those who understand it. Um, I can't understand this language here. And you see it even has an obelisk on top of it. You know, with these three things for the concept of three, probably. And the whole thing has uh, four sides. Concept of four. And also this side is the concept of three. It's a triangle, you know. So the pyramid in itself has the concept of three and four, and it says um, square and compass, just like just being a pyramid, it says it all, you know. And that's Napoleon. Um, so it's a sort of a step pyramid. It looks a bit like the ones in South America with this thing in the middle. And um, yeah, well, go and have a look at the video. So here you can read about it in Wikipedia, the Pyramid of Austerlitz. I pronounce it the German way, of course. And um, it's built here on the Utrecht Hill Ridge. That's what I was talking about. I think Utrecht, that's a town somewhere in the lowlands. And the hill. It's like um, a reference to a uh, mont, uh, Auguste, Auguste de Marmont. You know, so mont is here, the hill. You know, so a pyramid on a hill. So this is the pyramid, and here's the hill. 
the Utrecht Hill Ridge, which you can see here. So they're quite um, specific about it, very precise. You know. And here it talks about the uh, Napoleon's Egyptian campaign, the Great Pyramid of Giza. You know, Napoleon, he was in Egypt, of course, you know, because they're all pharaohs, eh? And um, yeah, it says Louis Bonaparte, he be, uh, the new king of Holland. You know, so, you know, um, but that was not anymore a um, a real monarchy. It became a constitutional monarchy, and they had to take the uh, the constitution of the revolutionaries, of course, of the horizontal rule. There are no real monarchies anymore in. Europe that's finished about I will tell you more in the next chapter it is not Germany the aggressor but France is and it's expanding revolutionary ideas is the aggressor so here you see the French Revolution French flag and it says France is the initial aggressor and leading to this here you see uh, hitler in front of the eiffel tower uh, you know we are so incredibly brainwashed that this here might be very hard to understand but you have to dig into the nobility to understand it you know the dumb european slaves they have absolutely nothing to do with all this actually they just executed all the orders they don't understand this they never did and they never will but then why during the two world wars did germany attack the basically peaceful countries like belgium the netherlands denmark norway and england you might ask. Well, these monarchies conceded France's aggression out of fear, sharing the same fate of the King of France, ending under the guillotine and be decapitated, thus becoming constitutional monarchies which you might just as well call a royal republic after the principle of the French horizontal rule Republican Revolution. So there was fear under the absolute monarchies of Europe, you know, to end up like this. So all these so-called peaceful countries, you know, that also got invaded by the Nazis, they became um, constitutional monarchies. There were no real monarchies. So it says in red, fear of the French revolutionary terror forced the remaining European absolute monarchies into, here in blue, into constitutional monarchies or cynically called royal republics. And that's very cynical for someone, you know, who is like initiated into what's really going on. They call this a royal republic. And I actually heard that before, that name, you know, when I was a child at home, you know, where the talk was not anymore about a constitutional monarchy, but just, you know, they called England back home in South Africa within the family. They didn't call England a constitutional monarchy, but, a, you know, cynically a royal republic. I heard my parents saying this, you know, so 
first time I repeat it here for you. The French Revolution, by the way, was organized from out of the Knights Templar base, Switzerland, which you can see here. Therefore, all the monarchs of Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, and the rest needed to be members of the Order of the Garter. After the British example of a compromise between the two aristocratic fractions of royalists and republicans. And this is why all these so called peaceful countries like yeah, Norway, Denmark, Belgium, Netherlands, and all that um, were attacked by Hitler because they were ex actually. Um, and still are constitutional monarchies who are actually just republics, you know, with a crown on it, nothing more. So it says, the, here you see the Order of the Garter, and it says, Onisua Kimali Pants, meaning uh, shame on the one who thinks bad of it, who thinks bad of the compromise, and also thinks bad of the Templars' um, republican way of ruling the horizontal way so you're not allowed to think bad of it you know that's why it says live or die you know for these monarchs you know and these monarchies um either you want to live and take the, the take the compromise you know the forced compromise of the order of the garter or you die that's why i put die here like in russia you know, the Tsars and also, you know, the Emperor of Germany in a certain way. In 1918, it says, here are all the dates. In 1918, he got abdicated and went to this constitutional monarchy here. And here it says, uh, the forced compromise between the vertical old world order and the horizontal new world order. So, actually, there are no more vertical old world orders in Europe. And actually, this date is wrong, but okay, I understand this is the official date, but it happened during the French Revolution in 1789. But okay, they, they put it on paper, the, Repub the First Republic in 1870. You see, Spain is a constitutional monarchy, Morocco also. And here you got um, Andorra here in the mountains. I went filming the cargo, but well, YouTube took the video off. You know. Here you got um, um, another principality. Here's a principality. Here's Liechtenstein. You know. A lot of money there. And um, so the dates are very interesting. You know, mostly it's, you know, after World War I. So I told you, two world wars were about, you know, a, a direct consequence of the French Revolution in blue. And all these old world orders, you know, they uh, had to leave and make place for the new world order. The Republic. And then you've got the Second World War, and all these monarchies here, you know, they had to leave as well. The uh, Italy, and, you know, all these here, and, and the Balkan, and even Bulgaria, I see here, and Romania, they all disappeared after the Second World War. So, you see, a lot of things happened. The First World War, the Second World War. And here the revolution, and these ones here, they wanted to, they didn't want to, you know, uh, get murdered like the French king, and they took up the compromise, you know, and England uh, way before that, you know, it happened in the 15th century, and you need to be part of the Order of the Garter, and these countries here, well, there's no, well, they are still not real monarchies, they're actually um, republics um, with a crown on it, a royal republic. So here it says, in blue, before World War I, in pink, 
in connection with World War I, and in uh, violet in connection with World War II, in brown after World War II, you got Ireland here, and Greece. They still had a king, you know, in Greece in the 70s, and red is still a monarchy. No, there are not monarchies, because it's not an old world order vertical rule. They're actually republics. They just have the name of a monarchy to avoid the bloodshed and to, uh, to save your own neck. You know, as Lady Diana said, I'm a prisoner of Wales. I'm not a princess of Wales, I'm a prisoner of Wales. Well, I'm not sure that she meant it this way, eh? We all know the story. I already explained uh, three or f I think or four years ago the Order of the Garter. Here says the Order of the Garter. Here's the title. And the Nobility of World Wars in, um, on, my, on the same channel here, Gure. Um, and now I'm going deeper into the, um, the consequences of the French Revolution, and that in fact uh, France is the aggressor, but only out of the point of view of the nobility, of course, not of the people. Um, out of the people's nobility, of course, Germany is the aggressor. But the people don't have anything to say, so we must see it out of the point of view of Pharaoh's nobility, whereas France definitely is the aggressor of two world wars or leading up to two world wars. So a constitutional monarchy like all the nowadays European monarchies and better called a royal republic is in fact a horizontal rule republic that merely carries the name of a monarchy where the republicans didn't kill the monarch his family and not butchering with it all relatives and all distant relatives into the second or third generation in fact just this map alone here perfectly explains the true reasons of two world wars and a third one in the make and coming up. Therefore, in England, the head of the English fascists, Sir Oswald Mosley, was a baronet with the family's castle, Rolston Hall being of Pharaoh's nobility, and even related to Queen Elizabeth, the wife of King George VI. So this is the castle. It says his noble castle, Rolston Hall. This, this bloke here was living there. There he is. The sixth baronet, Sir, which is from Sar. I explained that to you, Pharaonic, Oswald Mosley. That's why this guy here, this one here, King Edward VIII, also was a personal friend of Adolf. We can even see them together. And we can see here the entire old world order vertical rule nobility conspiring with Adolf to bring back the old world order. Whereas, in the end, Adolf betrayed them all. The two world wars were organized by the nobility due to their internal war of how to rule over the dumb European slaves, whether to put them under vertical old world order royal rule or horizontal new world order republican rule and here it says the baronet mosley and here king edward and they were related they were cousins you know through um through the mother of his brother uh queen elizabeth yeah 
it's all the same. It's one big family, you know, just putting the whole of Europe in world wars. Also, the English Baroness Unity Mitford, a personal friend of Adolf Hitler, was of the English nobility and being a Baroness and living in the castle of Asthall Manor with her sister, the Baroness Diana Mitford, marrying the sixth baronet, Sir Oswald Mosley. So here you can see them together, the sisters, the English baronesses, Diana, who later became Mosley, and Unity Mitford. I guess this is Unity Mitford, uh, this one as well. And this is probably Diana Mosley Mitford, and here as well, together with Hitler. So you see, it's a whole pharaonic nobility conspiracy, and the people, the dumb European slaves, they have to die for them. You know, my question to you all is do you want to continue to die for this bunch here? Of course, the horizontal rule Republicans shot her in the head with a 635 caliber pistol, most likely the Swiss octagon doing the job. I know history says that she did it herself. Well, do you believe it? I don't. So here you can read about Sir Oswald Mosley. It says the sixth baronet, and it says his father was a third cousin to the 14th Earl of Strathmore, Strathmore and King Horn, the father of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. So he was also related to King Edward, and they're all visiting Adolf, you know. It's one big happy family, pharaoh, pharaonic family. And here it says, ah, the marriage. Um, ah, the marriage, ah, here, yeah. the marriage to Diana Mitford. Yeah. They married in secret in Nazi Germany. Well, what do you know? Eh? And, yeah. It's all about the internal pharaonic war between the vertical ones and the horizontal ones. Yeah. And we have to die for this. They're not going to tell us anything. Eh? Here you see him with Mussolini. Yeah. And um, yeah. So you want to continue to die for these ones? Really? You must do something about it. So here you can read about the Mitford family. They even have a coat of arms. Well, so did Mosley. I forgot to show it to you. And um, they were el twice elevated to the British peerage in 1892 under the title Baron of Regisdale. You know, it's all nobility and related to the Windsors. So you got the Mitford siblings. Here's the coat of arms again. Now oh, you see, it has the concept of three, three squares, and the square itself is the concept of four. Funny enough, that is the symbol of the horizontal rule. And um, that's funny. So here you can um, here you can read the Diana Mitford, you know. And um, well, she married uh, Sir Oswald uh, Mosley. There he is again. And he got Unity Mitford and her friendship with Adolf Hitler. Oh, charming family, isn't it? Charming indeed. It's all Pharaoh's nobility. Oh, it's so obvious. The Baroness Unity Mitford was shot by the Allies, who are allied after the Republican idea 
of the horizontal rule by the Knights Templars and their Freemasons. This is why all the assembled Republican nations against the Nazis of the Empire of Germany, against the fascists of Italy and their kingdom, and against the Empire of Japan, were called the Allies. Allied in the very idea of the Republican belief after the French Revolution, as the Knights Templars founded the revolutionary ideas in Troyes, France. So here you see all the flags of all the Republican horizontal rule nations. And here it says the Allies allied under the idea of the horizontal rule V for the Republic. Here it is V for the victory of the Freemasons and their Knights Templars. It's the Templar V, as I already explained to you. This is what the whole war was about. Both world wars. It is because of this allied idea that France is the only country in Europe that has no American bases. France being the only country in Western Europe with her own nuclear bombs, and France momentarily being the second arms exporter in the world. Because considering the Republican idea and its realization, France is considered to be the father, Switzerland the mother, with its nest. America, the child, is the most powerful republic in the world. And the JJ base, the grandchild, an only stable democratic republic in the Middle East, being the only reason the US will always protect its republican child in the Middle East. As in real politics, Religion has no role at all at the highest levels of Pharaoh's nobility and their new republican system, also called the horizontal New World Order. So here it says, France is the father where it all started, Switzerland the mother where the big nest is. America, their new world order baby, uh, l'enfant terrible, maybe, <laughs> as the French would say it. And the JJ base, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce this word because of the censorship. The machine would recognize it immediately, so I call it the JJ base, J for the J people or the J walkers. So the JJ base is the grandchild. And this is from. This is Statue of Liberty. It's from the French slogan of the Republic. La liberty or freedom, equality, fraternity. Now you see the Statue of No Liberty, the Statue of No Liberty next to the Eiffel Tower. And this is why Mr. Hitler was in Paris in 1940 on November the 28th. And this is so very important to understand this because history is not only, you know, knowing the dates and, you know, what happened. No, history is actually crypto history, you know, to explain why, where, who, and what. That is the real history. And I'm trying to do this for you here. So in the next picture, it says here, around the year 1000, all of Europe had already been divided in between Pharaoh's nobility and the subdued Europe. And here it says the masters and their castle, the masters and their European slaves of the white race. So here you see the masters of Pharaoh's nobility, 
who had already around the year 1000 divided all the land in Europe amongst each other. And you see the uh, dumb European slaves who never understood anything and will never understand anything either. And unfortunately, um, collaborate with these pharaohs. Well, they don't have much choice, actually. Uh, here you can see them working on the field, you know, the slaves. You know, the white race are slaves. So due to Pharaoh's internal war, the Jay Walker nobility has always been in favor of the horizontal rule and its republic. Because as the Jay Walker nobility never really owned land and castles in Europe because they arrived much later when all had been divided amongst the European nobility, for which the Jay Walker nobility went into the financial world making money in order to buy land and castles. So here it says, J. Walker nobility owned no land or castles in the Middle Ages of Europe. Here we can see another reason for these aristocratic top Nazis to hate the J. Walker nobility, an idea with which they infected the dumb European slaves with for their own behalf. So here it says no more land. Well, what else to do? Yeah. So I'm talking here about Pharaoh's nobility. These ones here who already took all the land around the year 1000. It had already been taken. And here you see the dumb European slaves who got infected with the idea, you know, to hate all the jaywalkers by the Nazis. And the top Nazis, they were these here. Well, part of them, the ones who were worthy of the old world order, not the ones of the new world order. And here came the newcomers, you know, of the jaywalker nobility. They didn't have any land, so what else to do? Instead of, you know, counting the money and make a living and get more power and land like this. So this, you know, it became... Um, quite a lot of friction between the newcomers and the old ones here. And therefore the newcomers here, they were more in favor of the new world order, you know, because which is a horizontal rule and not a vertical rule like this one's here. You know, for the new world order, you don't need necessarily a castle and land as in the middle ages, the only capital was the land. There was no other capital. And these ones here, they made a new sort of capital. So this is another internal war between the jaywalker nobility, so not the normal jaywalkers, who are just dumb slaves, just as these ones here. They're not superior, they're not uh, the chosen ones or whatever. It's all nonsense. You know, they are dumb slaves, the normal jaywalkers, just like the European slaves you can see here. This is, I'm talking about the nobility, you know. So this whole film, this whole video is about the, uh, the view of the nobility about everything. Not really about how the people and the, the dumb slaves see things, you know. It is therefore that Adolf Hitler was in Paris on June 28th, 1940. Seemingly, for those who don't understand, visiting the Eiffel Tower, like any tourist would do, and stretching out his arm in the infamous Nazi salute, as if he was measuring its height, saying, the Eiffel Tower is this high. So for those who've always been wondering, why the Nazis did that ridiculous salute. Oh, now you know why. So here in the picture, you see him visiting the Eiffel Tower. 
doing the salute, measuring up the tower, you know, like as in one of his fabulous paintings, you know, measuring it up, probably normally holding a pencil in here or a brush. And here it says, the Eiffel Tower is that high. You know, Adolf measuring it up, saying the Eiffel Tower is that high. You know, a ridiculous behavior. <laughs> well, it needs a ridiculous answer, doesn't it? Um, so here you can see Adolf in front of the Eiffel Tower, like a normal tourist. Here it says, Adolf in Paris on June 28th, 1940. But no, really, this is not the real reason why he was in Paris and measure up the height of the Eiffel Tower. So here it says June 28th, 1940. Here you can see Hitler. And it says here Hitler at Les Invalides. Here you see Napoleon. So the real reason for which Hitler was in Paris was to go to the French Les Invalides building to see the tomb of Napoleon and to address Napoleon's spirit, so to say, in front of the aristocratic German generals saying, you see, you wanted to attack Germany in 1803 with your horizontal rule Republican expansion defeating Germany at Austerlitz in 1805. But now we are here, you see, in France, in your capital, Paris, at your tomb. So who's the winner, huh? And who is the real aggressor then? It says, moment of victory, Hitler at the tomb of Napoleon, the aggressor of Germany. So here you see Hitler with all the aristocratic generals around him. And this here is the tomb of Napoleon at Les Invalides in Paris. So here you can see the same configuration here and here. And this is the same thing, the tomb of Napoleon. So, and all this must have thrilled the German nobility around Hitler, who had agreed with Hitler to bring the German emperor back on the throne and restore the old world order, vertical rule. Not knowing that in fact Hitler admired Napoleon, because Hitler was in fact an agent of the Garter, the compromise between royalists and republicans. So again, Hitler standing here at the tomb of Napoleon, it says here, posthumous victory over the French aggressor of Germany. Here's a statue of Napoleon. It's like speaking to the ghost here. And so, the French were the aggressors, basically, you know, from the point of view out of, of the uh, nobility, of course. The people have ex absolutely nothing to do with this, you know. They just executed all the orders and they bled for, the, for these pharaohs. So this is why this is so very important. To understand the Second World War, you know, why Mr. Adolf, he was here. Why? Is this so important? So here is the title, and here is the same channel. And I've explained Hitler's betrayal in this video here. Thus, Adolf betraying both the German nobility and their wish to restore the empire, and he betrayed the dumb German slaves who were hopelessly entangled and fanaticized by 
and for Pharaoh's nobility. Therefore, it is extremely important to understand Hitler's visit to Paris in 1940, visiting the tomb of Napoleon, because it is France being the aggressor, leading to two world wars and all its horrors and genocides. We should stop seeing France as the poor, innocent victim of two world wars. Because, in fact, France is the aggressor, who triggered two world wars by imposing the new aristocratic system on the old aristocratic system and its old monarchies like Germany, Austria, Russia, and Italy, who didn't want the new system imposed by war, terror, and bloodshed by the French revolutionaries. So here you see the, um, in 1940, the, uh, the, the German army like marching into Paris. This here is the Arc de Triomphe. This is the symbol of the French Republic. You know, so again, you know, marching through it, marching through the Republic. Again, it's, it's very symbolic of the German uh, no, old world order nobility, you know, walking through the new system. Like here, the old world's order walking through the symbol of the new world's order. The vertical ones walking through this um, horizontal monument, so to speak. So here it says, this here was the second response by Germany's old world order nobility on the French new world order revolutionary aggressions by Napoleon. All wars are the result of the internal strife within Pharaoh's worldwide nobility. And again, you know, the dumb European peoples, they are just slaves. Either both the Germans and the French, they didn't have a clue what was going on, what they were fighting for and why they were fighting at all both in the two world wars and both, you know, the uh, Napoleonic conquest. Europeans, they're just slaves in a feudal system. and They have no clue whatsoever. These are all nobility world wars. So here you see the French army and Napoleon riding and attacking Europe. And here it says, fanatic French New World Order revolutionaries aggress Europe, leading to two world wars. So this eventually led to the two world wars, as the nobility decided so. When France aggressed Germany prior to World War I, the dumb French slaves of the ordinary people were as fanaticized with these revolutionary ideas and behaving like the fanatic SS or being fanatic like Hamas. So here you see the castle in medieval Europe. Here you see the Europeans. It says the masters out of Pharaoh's nobility in the castle you know, and their European feudal slaves obediently doing all the work and all wars for them. And this is how Pharaoh's internal struggle leads to all wars while mobilizing their dumb human slaves of Pharaoh to do the fighting for them. And if we don't understand this crypto history and the real reason behind two world wars, we will never be able to avoid future wars and to stop 
the present ones. In the name of the German people, Germany got known as the aggressor nation, creating two world wars, where in fact Germany is the victim of the French Napoleonic revolutionary New World Order aggressions, because of which the German Old World Order nobility decided to counter-strike. In all these idiotic wars, the various dumb European slaves merely executed the orders of their various pharaonic masters of the two opposing fractional antagonists without knowing what exactly the dumb European slaves were actually fighting for. Therefore, it is so crucially important to know and understand what exactly Adolf Hitler was doing in Paris at Les Invalides on June 28, 1940, in order to understand the who and why of two world wars, because Adolf was visiting the tomb of the initial instigator of two world wars. We must stop this bloody tragedy now, and only the knowledge through this information can and hopefully will.